Hello, welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. My name is Adam Downing with Virginia Cooperative Extension as an extension forester. Today we're going to talk about pine management, which is a very common option for tree farmers to consider growing on their land. And one reason tree farmers might consider growing pine versus hardwood is because of the soils. Poorer soils will support good pine growth better than they will support good hardwood growth. That doesn't mean that pine won't do well on good soils, it certainly will, but it competes better on poorer soils. Another reason is for wildlife. And a third reason that I'll offer is for quicker economic gain. So you'll see plantations of pine that are planted much like corn would be um, and managed more rigorously. So today we're gonna to talk about that management scheme. And behind me, to start with, we're on a, a friend of mine's property who's also a forester and his name is Matt Dowdy. Introduce you to him in just a moment. But uh, behind me is um, a stand of, of timber that uh, is what uh, the clear cut that we're going to look at here in a minute looked like before it was cut. Old Virginia pine, some mixed hardwoods in there, pretty low value stand for lots of reasons. And so the decision was made to uh, clear cut it and start fresh with pine. So we're going to grow this pine stand in the next 14 minutes. So stay tuned. All right, so as I mentioned, we're on the property uh, owned by Matt Dowdy, who is a friend of mine and a consulting forester here in Louisa County. Matt, tell us about what we have going on here. What we've got going on here, this was a, as Adam mentioned, this was an old field Virginia pine and natural hardwood stand. Uh, it had a significant amount of ice damage and storm damage and low stocking levels. So to, re to create early successional habitat for wildlife, and to, you know, and to regain a productive forest management state, we decided to clear cut it about two years ago. Uh, the logger that we had employed a fuel chipper, so most of the products that we got were hardwood and pine pulpwood and then fuel chips to run the boiler at the paper mill. Upon harvest completion, we decided to allow the track to naturally generate for one year to get the natural pine seedling seed, seed source out of the ground. And then we came back with a chemical site prep spray that basically killed all of the competing vegetation. And then in uh, March of 2020, earlier this year, we planted the stand with 545 trees per acre of genetically improved loblolly pine seedlings. And as you can see here right below me, this, this tree has had one growing season. Uh, if you can see a few of these other trees behind it, this tree is a little bit taller than the rest. And then what you see behind here is an average one growing season pine. Uh, but this one really took off and was really a good, uh, got a good head start. Here we are on another portion of my property, and these are four-year-old loblolly pine seedlings. So as you can see, the seedlings that barely came up to my knee after one growing season and four years are 10 to 12 foot tall. Now these seedlings that we planted, we planted at a rate of 545 trees per acre, which is a pretty standard planting density. And these trees are a, a, an above average genetic. They're from the De Virginia Department of Forestry. It's their Virginia's best seedling. Uh, they're a little bit more uh, expensive, but I'm expecting at the end of my rotation to pick up about 50 to 60% higher growth uh, than, a, than a, a normal loblolly pine seedling. Behind me is a stand of three-year-old loblolly pine seedlings. These are one year younger than the stand that we just saw, and this was a different seedling. This was a warehouser mass control pollinated seedling. Uh, again, this was a, a higher genetic seedling than your, than your normal premium seedling. And with mass control pollinated, they actually select the tree and they know both the, both parents of the, of the parent tree uh, to control the genetic traits just a little bit better than an open pollinated seedling. Right around, right around this clearing, we, we created a clearing for both wildlife and habitat and also as a shooting range for our property. We do do a, quite a bit of recreation. And right around here, we just left a few white oak seedlings, you know, just to put down some acorns for white-tailed deer and for wild turkey. It was just, you know, just a little, little bit of a variation, you know, in our management techniques. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the southern yellow pine grouping. So, so far what we've talked about and looked at is loblolly, which is the most commonly planted southern yellow pine in Virginia and in much of the southeastern United States. And it grows well in this area. It is not quite native to the Piedmont of Virginia, however. It is native to the southeastern part of Virginia 
and, it, uh, and yet it is planted all the way up into Pennsylvania. The native southern yellow pine to the Piedmont of Virginia, where we are here in Louisa, is actually shortleaf, which is what we've got here behind us. It is a diminished species, and so the state has been encouraging uh, reforestation with shortleaf pine in its native range for the past number of years. And this is one of the successful trees, and there's a nice field of it behind us. This tree is four years old. So let's talk about uh, the southern yellow pines. There are four main ones in Virginia. There's longleaf pine, which is in the far southeastern Virginia and further southeast uh, in the U.S. from there. Longleaf pine, beautiful tree, does not grow up here. Uh, the loblolly, which is what we've been looking at so far, it has three needles per fascicle. Okay, so we've got three needles, and the fascicle is a little papery sheath at the bottom that kind of holds these needles together. So that's loblolly and the most commonly planted one. All right, and here's the loblolly uh, branch. Now, the shortleaf pine that I have here behind me, it has needle groupings generally of two needles per fascicle, okay? And again, there's the, this doesn't have as much of a fascicle, but these are in groupings of two. Now, you, there are exceptions. There are shortleaf that have three, and there are uh, loblolly that have two. But by and large, if you look at the whole, that's what they'll be. Now, shortleaf pine needles are not necessarily short. They're just about the same length as loblolly. The shortest leaf southern yellow pine that we have in Virginia is actually Virginia pine. And it also has two needles per fascicle, but much shorter leaf and, and twisted. And the way we can remember that is VA, Virginia, V with two needles. All right. We're, we're now standing in an 18-year-old um, stand of loblolly pines. Um, this stand is scheduled for a pine thinning next summer. And loblolly pine is, grows healthiest between a basal area of 60 or 70 square foot per acre to 120 square foot per acre. This stand averages 150 square foot per acre. So once it gets above 120 square feet, we want to schedule a thinning. And when you're looking at the health of a loblolly pine stand, you're looking at the crowns of the trees. And the crowns, what we measure is the live crown ratio. And basically, as one of my foresters at Virginia Tech used to say, it's the ratio of green stuff to brown stuff. Uh, so when you look at these crowns, when you have one third, of the, one third of the total tree height in pine needles, that tree is growing healthy. And when you have less than one third of the total height, that tree is suppressed and not growing as well. Uh, now, when you look at this pine stand, when we do this pine thinning, we're going to remove about half to two-thirds of the volume, and we're doing that to create early successional habitat for wildlife, as well as to grow future salt timber. Uh, right now, we have products that are pine pulpwood and pine fence post material that are pressure treated for the fence post market. Uh, once we thin this stand, we will grow it out about another 15 to 20 years and grow uh, loblolly pine salt timber. And our loblolly pine salt timber is mainly pressure treated materials. And in this area, the highest and best use are decking boards. Uh, decking boards, two by fours, four by fours, and six by sixes. Uh, now we also have another option, you know, if, say this was another landowner, they could grow this stand out to 20 or 22 years old and clear cut it all for pulp wood and fence post. So basically once we get the stand to this age, we need to make a decision whether we're going to clear cut or do another thinning. Uh, and again, you know, once you do this first thinning, there's a couple options. You know, some people will let it grow seven to 10 years and you can perform a second thinning and then let it grow another seven to 10 years and do a, a, a thinning after that. And as long as you maintain the, the, the uh, one, as long as you maintain a healthy uh, stocking level, you know, loblolly pine can grow for 60, 70, 80 years. But here in Virginia, we typically grow for a salt timber rotation age, which is, uh, economically mature at 35 to 40 years of age. All right, behind me is a 19-year-old loblolly pine plantation that was thinned one growing season ago. It was thinned last winter. And this stand was thinned for diversity and wildlife uh, habitat management and early successional habitat. And we thinned it down underneath the base where of 60. On a typical loblolly pine thinning, we typically like to stay between a stocking level of 70 
to 80 square foot of base wear per acre. And this has an average of 50 to 60 square foot of base wear per acre. Um, and my goal with this stand is to probably let it grow for about 15 to 20 years. And that time it'll probably double, at least double if not triple in volume. Uh, and at that time, you know, right now most of what is left is pine chip and saw and pine fence post material. And at the final harvest, I'd be looking to produce loblolly pine saw timber. Okay, I'm standing next to a fairly mature loblolly pine. This uh, tree is probably about uh, 18 or so inches in diameter. And uh, this is a more mature pine stand than what we've been in and actually on a different property. And uh, what we're looking at here is that the live crown ratios that uh, Matt Dowdy mentioned earlier are beginning to uh, close in on one third or less. So just panning up here, looking at some of the tops of these crowns, we got one third or less green stuff to brown stuff. So that's when we know we either need to uh, conduct another thinning or uh, decide that this stand is mature and go ahead and harvest it. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of 15 Minutes in the Forest. I want to thank Matt Dowdy again, a uh, friend and a forester, and give a shout out. I don't have any uh, shirt or hat to give a shout out to the Association of Consulting Foresters, but Matt Dowdy is involved with that group as a great group of professional foresters. And if you need professional forestry assistance on your land, then we would recommend finding a professional forester either through ACF, Association of Consulting Foresters, or through another association that we're both part of, the Society of American Foresters, in particular our Virginia Division. And we are both members of the local chapter called the Skyline Chapter. So shouts out to both Society of American Foresters and the Association of Consulting Foresters. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day.